year, once again, to retrospect, we've got plural independent living services and FDA should know better than to be carrying away excess on properties and then putting in applications. It's so annoying and I think maybe we should need to do something separate. I was struck by the planning history that similar um, planning applications for uh, lot alterations were refused on two separate occasions uh, in the past for, uh, I assume, reasons of uh, overlooking. Um, going on to the council planning uh, pages, um, it was clear that the initial uh, intention was for the uh, new space to be used as a bedroom. Previously uh, issued a vote and probably would have made it and it may very well have uh, been recommended for a few sorts of grounds. It strikes me that we've engaged with the, um, with the applicants uh, to persuade them to move the, uh, the office to go to supporting staff accommodation from the ground floor where it initially was to the roof. Um, and I just wonder about the satisfactory nature of that as a roof. Um, one would have built the office. Uh, or really to be close to the entrance um, to, to monitor the icons and goes. There's no point about having staff on site in uh, an establishment like that to be able to control comes and goes to be able to um, see what's going on. It's actually that the last page is actually the rare possible place to put the office. But the only possible place is to put it where you could insist on playing uh, windows that would overcome uh, if I did. Uh, uh, well, look, I think it's an unsatisfactory solution um, for all involved. Uh, I understand uh, that it was asking me to resource it, possibly to take it on its, on its, on its own merits and not, and, and not worry the jury about it. But we do see from time to time these, uh, these conversions of properties into uh, small flats or exits or uh, HMOs. And we've got to ask ourselves constantly the question is it? Suitable, is the property suitable for the number of people that we want to put in? Now, my understanding is we want to put four flats in and one office. Now, if you, if, if you can't really use the, the, the lot extension as either an office, in my view, it's in the wrong place, or the bedroom because of the issue, then it's only suitable for three bedrooms and one office. Um, that's, I'm not happy uh, about it, but I'll certainly listen to it. Yeah, thanks, Anita. Yeah, I, I fully endorse my concern that Stuart has raised. I also raised some other concerns that I think were answered by the officers during my briefing. The previous two applications were both refused, and they were refused apparently because the consideration of putting dormer windows in the front of the building were deemed to be unacceptable. At least that was certainly one of the reasons. And I gather this one has been approved as opposed to the other one being refused because the dormers will only be on the rear elevation, if I picked that up correctly. And of course, you're suggesting that the rear ones will also be obscurely glazed, which will prevent any potential overlooking. But I have to say, I haven't picked it up earlier, but I think Stuart has made a good point about putting the offices for developments like this so far removed from the entrance to the next bit. It's not the sort of thing you would normally do, and I think I have to, uh, I have to uh, endorse George's concern over that chair. Yeah, thanks, Chair. I think there are offices all there. The, the, the proposed office is it for admin. Is there a separate reception area? Because there are different offices looking for a manager or in that admin place. I'm not sure if that's where it goes. So, so this is the, uh, the entrance to the property here. 
Um, so there isn't any um, office space um, on, on the ground floor. You go straight into the, the first um, flat uh, here, then there's a second one here, then again two more on the second floor, then as we know the staff room is, is, on, the, uh, is on the first floor, uh, on the second floor, sorry, in the roof space. So you have a plans up for it, and just in this flat, I assume I don't want to come back. But could you just indicate where the staff room was initially? Clearly, the staff room in the roof space was uh, intended in the initial plan to be a bedroom, uh, and one of the uh, one of the other bedrooms was the staff room. Which one would that have been? Uh, so. It was bedroom two. This, this, this one was the bed on the ground floor. Any other comments? Could I just ask for some clarification as a new member of the committee based on the first question? Is this is not the first time when we've done it in the panel and applied retrospectively. Is there a bit of a track record then? No. no um, the property before was a, a single family dwelling and an application was made for um, accommodation in the roof space as a, as a bedroom um, and that application was refused um, on two grounds. One, um, the, uh, the, the bedroom and the roof space would introduce additional overlooking um, which we felt was unacceptable at that time. Uh, but there were also uh, dormers proposed in the uh, in the front uh, roof play, uh, which is contrary to council policy. I'm not referring to this particular property. I'm referring to the applicant rural independent living. Whether there have been similar applications that have been retrospective, or you know other applications that have been. <coughs> yeah, we were only being asked to consider this application. Okay, any other comments then? Have we got a move on? Turn to policy HS4. 
Um, there's, there, there is a series of criteria in policy HS4, and one of those, um, point two, relates to the proposal not resulting in a detrimental change in the character of the area. Um, access and service being capable of satisfa satisfactory provision. Um, appropriate provision of design features which contribute to a secure environment and reduce the likelihood of crime. The provision of adequate individual, private or communal garden space to each dwelling. And the property being of a scale which relates well to surrounding property in particular with regard to existing densities and for the development. Just to give the um, committee a little bit more guidance, policy HS14 is specifically about houses in multiple occupation, and, and this application doesn't fall into, in, into that um, category as such. Um, so there is, there is different categories um, that, that, that have been applied, and you picked up on the one that, that we, we've used um, on, on other applications. Um, I'm guessing that there may be some concern around the uh, the way that the accommodation is is set out, the layout of it. Um, I am just struggling at, at this time to come up with a form of, of, of words for, for refusal. Um, I really need some guidance from the committee about what your concerns are and then I can try and formulate something for you, I think. And Ms. Gibbs? Thanks, Jay. And uh, I welcome the clarification in terms of no lack of no reception area, no entrance to the door. Now given you know, what the what proposal is to change to shelter of the population, I, I'm just wondering you know, any details within the application as to how you know, access to the building is controlled or how you know, the residents are monitored? Uh, three, Chair. The, the short answer to that is no, there isn't any detail provided um, around, around uh, how the site would be managed. Um, but that would be for the responsibility of the, the site operator. Um, but, but no, there, there aren't any details provided with the planning application on that basis. Yeah, just, uh, just saying, from what you've described in those HS notes, there's no specific statement to the effect that the supervision has to be close to where the people are. It's just that from a natural justice perspective, if these people are vulnerable in some way or disadvantaged, should they be so far removed? Um, from those who might try to get hold of them or influence them or, or in other ways uh, injure them because the, um, the supervision, if you like, is so far away from them. I don't know whether there's anything in that, Matthew, that you could make from that. Possibly not, but I think that is the concern that's being expressed. So we have a building here which, as we thought, has got two bedrooms on the ground floor, two bedrooms on the first floor, and the people who might be responsible for supervising it are far removed from reality in that sense. And I think there's a general concern about whether we should be approving something that is like that. Because most shelter accommodation I know has the supervision, if you like, or, or the reception area or whatever, close to the entrance so that people can at least be contacted and uh, accessed from that direction. Because, I mean, if something went wrong in one of those bedrooms and somebody was ill, what are they supposed to do? Climb upstairs and go and complain to somebody about the need to uh, access I think it's just a general concern, I agree, it doesn't appear to come within the specific readings of the HS policy as you've mentioned, but I just wonder whether there's anything that we can generate that would be suitably robust to resist appeal, at the same time taking into account our concerns, I'm afraid I can't really come up with anything better than that. seems to be around the table a reluctance uh, to move this application for approval. 
an application to the office in the again, um, so it, it, is, um, it, it is a specific set of circumstances that we need to make it to the community. We need to be so far, but I don't want to tell you to in terms of what um, Professor Matthew said, um, I'll, I'll, I'll move that forward. Thank you, Stuart. Do you have a second?